for out there. Thank you. Today is Wednesday, July 22nd, 2015, 8.45 a.m. This is the time and place set for a meeting with Mr. Idaho Lorax. Uh, Mr. Lorax is present. Uh, sir, uh, time's ours. Time is yours. Okay, I want to refresh your memory of a meeting we had when I first came back here. It was your last recorded meeting that you publicly uh, recorded. Um, at that time, or shortly thereafter, there was also an issue which stemmed for regarding assessments of property and the legality or illegality of those things. It took place here, and then the decision was made after. And I'll get back to that. Uh, what we hear, first of all, clearly, and on the other side of that, is the Nuclear Free School Zones Initiative. Now, we are doing that in several communities, and I want you to be aware of it. It's not, we're not doing it countywide. We're actually looking at community by community for people who have the uranium materials in their community. Right now, we're focusing on the smaller communities like Ginkham and Chubbuck. And so we're, uh, of course, we have some hopes that, you know, Chubbuck will take the lead and go for the cleanup monies for the uranium materials in their community. Uh, for events that have happened recently, not just lately, but, you know, this year, with the acts of God, with the fallout contamination, has made a lot of awareness of people of something we've already been working on. The denial of the health department, of course, saying that they don't know anything about anything, of course, was... Not uh, true, because I informed the health department. And I informed all the agencies. And when I first came here, I put, tried to provide all that information for all the agencies here. And that was some problem with the EPA, Environmental <clears throat> Protection Agency, not releasing them to me or you. And so that's Freedom of Information Act. So uh, I must still lay in your behalf to retrieve some of those documents. There are other documents you are supposed to have on hand. They were, they were decisions made here in hearings in the, back in 1991, other times, and you're supposed to have your own copies, not me provide them for you. This is by law, you're supposed to have them, and these are meetings I had when I first came here with the EPA and the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality when they obtained these for me for that hearing with the assessment issues. And so what we're looking at here is you know, your participation in, because you're overseeing over the different cities in our community, hopefully, or involvement in the cleanup of those communities and the monies, of course, for to pay for those things from the <coughs> bodies that have the money and which I presented in hearings to We're not ask over for. Any cities. What? We're not over the cities. Well, in the sense that you're the next level up. Doesn't mean over the cities, the cities take care of themselves. I know. It's saying the next level up, okay? It's kind of like a public initiative at a local level, county level, state level, uh, federal level, okay? And just laws that way too. Uh, so just looking at it, I'm sorry about the confusion of the word over, you know. Uh, so anyways, I look to proceed on that. We hope your participation will be uh, gratefully accepted by communities because you have materials in this community which have been exposed, such as the newly published uh, issue with the Bannock County Fairgrounds or the wellness site, uh, the uranium materials up there. That has just recently been published. And it's on that other side where the Pocatello State Journal is uh, US is where all the materials, well, not all, all the materials are being published there. Are you saying there's materials at the wellness complex that shouldn't be there? Yes. I've been documenting this stuff for since I came back here. Okay. There's, You're sure there's I don't have any doubt I'm the expert here. I am the expert if that's material. Have you been in there and checked it out? Yes, of course. Several in, times. In other words, you've trespassed. On county property? It's not county property. I'm talking about the, I thought you were talking about the fairgrounds. No, you're talking about the wellness project. You're oh, the fairgrounds, no, wellness. I don't have to go on the wellness program pro property to do that. You can get it from right above. And the property's right next to it, which is the National Guard. Okay, where a lot of the source of the uranium materials is still. Okay, okay. So, anyways, um, one of the things that follow through with everything here, and which also has been published and made public, 
is the fact that the illegality of this material, any people selling property to anybody, is called property dumping. This stuff was, decisions were made on the use of this material years ago. You're supposed to have those documents. You're supposed to have those decisions. And so decisions were made on the use or non-use of these uh, radioactive materials. And of course, the extension of that on some part of these properties is the same thing also. Of, in other words, you can't dump it on somebody else. You can't sell it. You can't be sold to protecting the individual, the household, the family, kids, children. Also, uh, no agency or body or government body can assess or allow it to be sold or used or those kinds of things. And finally, this is all condemned properties. And so people shouldn't be paying their taxes on it. Shouldn't have been assessed as a legal assessment. Therefore, no paying of taxes, and they should be able to retrieve any taxes paid on their property that's had this material that in, in their knowledge or the people who have known. There are some people who can claim ignorance, but since I came, I made sure that make big free agency knew, had the data come, any more data they wanted, I could provide it. And others, of course, from the EPA or Freedom of Information Act, a lot of it's published. Even we've got some of that stuff published. So, yes, we are campaigning for not only the health issues, the protection, the compensations that are also there for people here on the Radiation Compensation Act. They, we are also, I have several, what do you call, uh, clients. And I had issues of, at the beginning, they were worried about having their own property condemned, so they didn't want to proceed at that time when the state made the decision that my, the material that got to them was one day late. And the issue then, of course, is new then, is they're supposed to have their own copy. I didn't have, shouldn't have had to provide it at all. So therefore, that was a mistake that the state made in that decision of assessment. And we're educating people on that, have been, will be doing a lot more of it. So we're hoping that realizing this affects tax base and a lot of other costs involved with it that you will hopefully entertain, help other communities and yourself in your own county to go for the monies to have this material cleaned up and removed properly. So that's the gist of what I'm here for today. I make it public, public record of it. I'm here to help you. I was always here to help you. I sorry about the name issue if you had problems with it. You know, people have problems with Anybody has a different name, uh, but I'm here to help you, work with you, help you obtain the correct materials, documents, uh, guide you for the equipment you should have had, the Geiger counters, what you should have had, Geiger counters, shouldn't have been lied to that there are Geiger counters here. And, but now the hazmat director, Tom Sanford and others, we will be going out, you know, doing on the ground survey too for those who, I uh, say I don't want to trust the two or three experts in the community uh, in regards to identifying this stuff because we study. But yes, I am the most knowledgeable one in it at all. So I'm here to help you, share this information with you. It's a good place to begin is the Pocatello State Journal. Like I said, everything's been published there. There's at least 4,000 people a week <laughs> lately and been reading it. And of course, that's the publishing distribution of things from there. So we contact and inform people worldwide because there is a need to warn people about our community. People are visiting, people are coming here, people are wanting to do business here, people want to buy homes here, property. Not being told does not make a happy camper. So we want to work together as I try to, to have a win-win situation. Nice little title on there, it's an organization I work for. Win-win, win-win way united. So hopefully we can move in that direction actually have meetings that don't exclude me and try to manipulate around the groups that I work with and my scientists and educators. So hopefully we can make progress here. Any questions? I don't have yeah. any questions, Mr. I have, Anderson. I have one question. Is there a certain level of this stuff that has that has to be reported or is there a lower level? Doesn't yeah, it is, it's always been the case. It's not a level, okay? It's not a, it's not a gamma issue. It's never been a gamma issue. Gamma is present. But gamma is not the issue in the uranium decay, de decay chain series. There's, there's basically over, over 100 different alpha beta emitting particle materials. And the pathways for each one of them into your body, they're all heavy metals, cause tremendous damage in the body. So the issue is, 
getting it in your body. And airborne is the main pathway. Of course, in the paper, you've read that others who weren't sharing this information, like the geological thing, about it even in our water, because it has been concentrating in our groundwater for this uh, municipality here in the water, Pukatel Municipal Watershed Aquifer. Uh, and that's just the nature of heavy metals. One and go low, water gets low, concentration goes, the fluorides mix in, it gets more soluble. And therefore, yes, it has also an issue in the drinking water. But 95% 98% is airborne issues. Stop that, you stop the problem. Other communities, northern Idaho is removing soils. Millions of dollars spent being spent up there every year. Moving, removing soils, contaminated soils, and of course that was the decay chain too, even though they kind of focus on the word lead, the end of the decay chain. Also in Montana and other places in the country are cleaning up and getting tremendous awards for cleaning up the uranium materials to save children, to save people's lives. So it's about time we move in that direction. Some of you are very much aware or have learned what particulate contaminants can do in the body. I mean, they can give you any kind of cancer imaginable. They will give you a cancer eventually if you don't die from other causes. But for the most part, they start as soon as they're in you. And it, let me give you some numbers there, Steve. Uh, Avogadro's number, anybody familiar with that word from science? Okay, ten times or six times ten to the twenty-third. Well, one micrometer, ten micrometer particle of fugitive dust size has zillions and zillions of these atoms in it. Zillions and zillions. So, you want to talk about levels? One. You don't get rid of it. Okay. They have equipment in INL, we're owned by the Department of Energy. They have another one, which we've been trying to get down here, be donated to the university. And we also asked the university to take a lead in this, because the university does not want it on its campus. But because of the milling operations that have taken place and heating the material by certain companies with Pocatello, the material has gotten back on the campus, because somebody always goes, oh, let me sell this stuff. Well, you chew up uranium rows, grind it up again, get rid of the hydrocarbons, and you end up with airborne materials, as well as when you're milling the road in the first place. So City of Pocatel is spending a lot of our taxpayers' money putting a new cover on everything in the roads here. And everybody can see that. It looks nice, but nobody has ever protected the people and their properties that it is on, and in some areas quite extensively, especially the old part of Chubbuck, which is now called Chubnobel and Yellowcake Avenue. So. They want to change. They want, I know they want out. They want to clean up. So we're going to do all we can to support Chubbuck in a small community because Pocatello has just been a jerk. I'm sorry. You know, lying, manipulation, banning me, you know, trying to stop uh, information dissemination. And we're just documenting all that and sharing it with everybody. So, okay. Okay. Anything else? I think that's enough for you to digest. Your paralegal or your legal department should get these documents. So you know where you're standing on some of these. Of course, you might want to look, and we can contact me. I'm hard to contact, but contact me. Idaho Lorax3 at gmail.com will get to me, or the Pocatello State Journal, which is pocatello.state.journal. Wait a minute, Pocatello State Journal. Pocatello.state.journal.us at gmail.com. You leave a message with them because I do help them.